Thanks for joining Rudy and me. We're in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 2 today. In fact, we're ending up chapter 2. We've told the story of Magi coming to uh, to see the baby Jesus. They were magicians from Babylon. We talked about that a couple of days ago. We talked about King Herod who uh, tried to kill all the babies thinking he would catch Jesus in that. I think it was Herod or either one of his sons that when he died, he ordered that one child be murdered in every family so that upon his death, all of Israel would weep. That gives you an idea of the nature of, it's either Herod or his son, I don't remember which one it was. Isn't that tragic? I, I, I never heard that. No, it's, it's my goodness. Yeah, it's, yeah. So let's look now about Herod died. Verse 19, well, when Herod died, an angel of the Lord suddenly appeared in a dream to Joseph of Egypt and said, Get up, take the child and his mother. Go to the land of Israel, for those who were seeking the child's life are dead. Joseph got up, took the child and his mother, and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was ruling in Judea uh, in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. And after being warned in a dream, he went away to the district of Galilee. There he made his home in a town called Nazareth, so what had been spoken through the prophets might be fulfilled, he will be called a Nazarene. Hallelujah. Take a shot at that, Rudy. Well, uh, calling his son out of Israel, I mean out of Egypt, yeah. you know, it's just like, this was one of the passages that, for me, that I realized that Jesus was the condensation into one individual of all of Israel. And, and all of Israel is an image to the world of the Messiah until we, 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 until we get this vis vision of God in the flesh right. 2,000 years ago. Yeah. So his story is much like it's a greater example of how God took them out of Egypt, yeah. out of slavery. Right. Right. And so, uh, and you know, uh, na that he be called a Nazarene. Uh, but then, you know, you go back and you read what a Nazarite vow is, and you realize. Uh, Jesus didn't fulfill that completely, but it, there was a three and a half year period in his life where he was set aside for the work of the Lord. Right. right. And uh, so. Yeah, so let me jump in. Okay. I, uh, uh, I, as you all hear me say a lot, I'm, I'm walking through very slowly the, the book of Isaiah. Uh, in my daily prayer time. And I, I'm in a section where the Bible talks about how the nations are nothing but a drop in the bucket before God, or maybe a speck of dust on the scales that you're trying to weigh. And I found myself saying to God, Lord, I'm, a, I'm just a nobody. And I am, by the way. I, I'm, just a, I'm just a nobody. I, I'm a speck. You know, and when you think about, we're reading ancient history. We've gone from Abraham now up to Jesus, and we're living in 2024, which was 2,000 years ago. I mean, we're, we're just a little speck. You know, what is it, the song, Dust in the Wind, something like that, okay? Uh, but then here is the Messiah, the Savior of the world, and he's born in a little dinky town, or he's born in Bethlehem, but he moves to a little dinky town that isn't even almost on the map. Correct. Uh, there's a big town, Sephorus, which is sort of a, a Roman blended town. It never gets mentioned in the Bible. It's nearby. Jesus wasn't there. He was in Nazareth. Uh, I, I, you know, let me, let me get just real basic. They didn't have toilets. They didn't have showers. Uh, they probably only had one change of clothes. Uh, he lived this incredibly basic, humble life. And he was the greatest person ever walked on the earth. True. 
the, talk about the humility of God. It just it thrills me. It does. <coughs> you know, on the on the, in the larger piece of that picture, he laid down his glory. Yeah. Uh, have, how often have we laid down our glory? Oh, quit that. Okay, yeah, I hear you. <laughs> well, I know. I mean, it's like when I thought that, when I when I imagined. I don't. I, you don't have to really imagine because you know that he laid down his glory because he walked around because the word became flesh. Yeah, yeah. And we all, I also know that when we see him in glory, I don't know. If, I don't know if we're going to be. I don't know. Without him doing something, our molecules are not going to stay together. Okay. No. Right. 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 One of my friends. You know, you talk about having a vision of God. One of my friends was asked so one time, "Have you, has that God ever talked to you?" He said, "You know, God knows I have a weak heart, and if He spoke to me, I'd, I'd be dead." You know. So, the glory of God is is beyond. Let's let's just spend one more minute on this. He came out of Egypt. Uh, <coughs> The Hebrew people under Moses came out of Egypt. There's a big picture there. What's the Egypt of your life? Where are you still a slave? God's coming through his son Jesus is on earth to take Rudy, Bob, and people who listen to us and everybody else to take us out of that slavery in Egypt. And we have a promised land he wants to head us to. It will look different for nearly every one of us, but we are cheating ourselves if we don't participate in that. Amen. Yeah. You know, in the in the next chapter, we're we're going to read that you know Jesus now is a will be a full grown man and be right. baptized, and he ends up with his own forty something, just like the forty years in the desert where right. Israel was tested. He gets tested too. Uh, Previews of coming attractions. Right, but that's that, that's how this this works in tandem. Right. And the things that he got tested by are the same things that we get tested Absolutely by. Absolutely true. Bunch of pray for us, Father. Uh, it brings a smile to my face, Lord. The way that you have made all of this so synchronized. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, Father, I thank you for that because it proves that you are the one that stands above the circle of the right. earth. Right. Oh Lord, open our minds to see you in Jesus' name. That's right. Amen. Pray that in Jesus' name. Right. Rudy, thank you. Thank you all so much for joining us today. Look forward to seeing you tomorrow. We'll be talking about John the Baptist. Have a great day.